Hello. I'm Eric Roth. And I'm Brad Lacerda. You're watching Brad and Eric Awesome Show. Great job. Safety edition. As a chem student, it's your job to make sure that your classmates stay safe. That means if you have simple folk, not like my friend right here, he's pretty smart, but look, simple folk like Allie, it's your job to make sure they live a safe and injury-free chem class life. Yeah, Paul, what are we, what are we saying? Alright, um, the lab, I say the lab is dangerous, but I'll just read it. Just don't get jumped by here. Fire's very fun. But in the hands of the wrong people, it can go horribly wrong. Notice here, Allie the simpleton plays much like a cat would with catnip with her in the flame. This can lead to extreme disaster. And if, if the simpleton does happen to catch on fire, I think I'm on fire. All you have to do is take a fire retardant blanket and you just cover her in the blanket, throw her on the ground. Make sure to roll around. Roll around. It's real good. As you can see, we did not panic in the face of danger. We simply doused Allie in the fire blanket and rolled her around to ensure a safe and healthy environment for her. Are you, are you, are you kidding me right now? The lab is a dangerous place. Even though it's simply, simply can we can try that again? The lab is a dangerous place. Even the most simple of implements, the most simple of lab environments, can cause extreme bodily harm. Right here is the first aid kit. You know what that's for? First aid. In here you got. Band-aids. No. Oh, I think I burned my head. No, I think... If the person gets a cut on their face... <laughs> That's you. You take the band-aid. Now, of course, you'll be wearing gloves because you don't want to get blood on your hands. You don't know what kind of blood blood she should be carrying. But you just... Just kind of... Put it on there. Sure, the band-aid has a, has a secure fit. And, yeah. First that aid. is how you administer first aid. Fire is one of the this Earth's most elemental forces. It helped primitive Cro-Magnon evolve from simple men to the civilized humans we know today through the force of fire. Fortunately, some humans still haven't mastered this ability. And for that reason, we have fire signatures. It's true. If someone who is too simple to cope with this elemental force, let's get out of hand. Then we got this baby right here. No, this is the fire extinguisher. Amperex 2000. Alright, you got your fire, fire. going here. Yeah. Right. Look at this fire. fire. Ah! Ah! Oh my god, <laughs> look at the fire. <laughs> no. Don't panic, look though. Look at me, look at me. All right, now, don't you panic. Do? Now you're going to want to take the pin and pull it out. And then you take this and point and shoot. Now I can't really do that because of, uh, you know, some... Certain reasons. Some certain reasons. It's not really a big fire, but... It's okay. So, Just remember. Do not bat with your the hands. The key part in dealing with the fire mm -hmm. is never to panic. You just gotta keep it in control and keep the simple folk from getting hurt. Awesome. It's, still, it's still going. Mm, there we go. Problem solved. Alright. I love chemistry. I do as well. Let's create a chemical reaction. Sounds like fun. First, I'll pour this into the beaker without reading the label. Whoa there, son. Before doing any chemical reaction, you're going to want to read those labels. What's a label, sir? It's the writing on the bottle to let you know what's in that bottle. The bottle reads H2SO4. Seems harmless. Therefore, let us mix it with this other unknown chemical. You never want to mix chemicals irresponsibly. They are very hazardous if they do not mix well. Well, in that case, we should just inhale it. Good idea. I will feel the chemical to see if it feels right. You never want to. Ooh, you never want to. <laughs> <laughs> you never want to feel or inhale chemicals because they could be hazardous to your body. What a smart man you are, Professor. <laughs> So before I begin the experiment, I should probably get this off my hand. Therefore, I will consume it. Don't Good thinking, <laughs> fellow partner. Don't consume um, chemicals. They could also be hazardous to your body. I feel... Uh, 
Uh, I feel well informed now. <laughs> I'm very prepared to begin my experiment. I feel prepared to live the rest of my life in safety. Thank you, Professor. What the hell are you guys wearing? What are you talking? Wait, what are you talking about? You can't wear that during a lab. Why not? Because you need aprons so you don't catch on fire. And you have to put goggles on so you don't get any chemicals in your eyes. I have goggles on. On your face. How? And at least you're wearing open-toed shoes. So what if you break something on your feet? Um, eh. I won't break anything. I'm cool. Yeah, I, I, I guess that. I probably also shouldn't be listening to my iPod right now. I, I should probably put a apron on. <laughs> and I, I probably shouldn't be wearing my sweatshirt because it's all baggy and stuff. I'll and if you have a luscious beard like I do, you should probably shave that off. your hair back. You should probably tie back my hair too. Oh, and these sleeves are really dangerous to get. Cool. When working in the chemistry lab, it's very important to remember appropriate conduct in order to prevent potential hazards or injuries. The following are a set of guidelines for a good lab conduct that should help to minimize these risks. When you are in the lab, you may find yourself oh, yeah. frequently moving from place to place. When this is the case, it is extremely important to walk, or you might find yourself in an unpleasant situation. You might knock over a Bunsen burner, a beaker of harmful chemicals, or your friend. When you're doing a lab, it is easiest to have read the procedure. This will make it more likely that everyone is working to the same end, and there is no confusion between you or your lab partner. <laughs> make sure that you don't bring any food or drink with you into the lab area, as it may get contaminated with chemicals, or it may contaminate the results. This is also the case for water bottles. Be aware of people in the lab who may be holding dangerous chemicals or glass. If glass is great, do not attempt to pick it up with your bare hand. A sharp shards of glass may not look sharp. If you do get chemicals on your skin, make sure that you wash wash it off immediately and alert the teacher as soon as possible. When preparing to pick up any piece of glassware, make sure that you check to make sure that it is not hot and hot glassware looks the same as cooled glass. Once you have picked up your piece of glassware, always hold it in a vertical position away from your body and other people. If you don't, If you end up spilling a chemical, such as an acid or a base, alert your classmates so that they can avoid it. Then alert the teacher, who will take the necessary steps to clean it up. Do not try it yourself unless it is water. Be aware that bases can potentially cause as much harm as acid, so do not touch a base with your bare hands. Let's get that cleaned up. Sure. When you want to take a sample of a chemical, do it this way. Okay. So remember, when you are conducting experiments in the lab, always play it safe. Don't do anything too extreme without the teacher's permission and enjoy chemistry.